I'm excited for this one. We're going to talk about Five Star Networks. Um, I love Five Star Networks. They're brilliant. I, they're one of those things in cryptography where you just think, wow, that's very clever. That's really elegant. And it's not even that complicated. And yet you just think that's, that's great. The Firestore Network was designed roughly around the 70s when um, Horst Firestore, who worked for IBM, who was a German physicist, with the NSA, he helped develop the um, data encryption standard, DES. Right? Now, DES was, as we know from a previous video, replaced by AES eventually, mostly because of its short key length. But DES, the structure of DES is something called a Firestore cipher, right? or a Firestore network. And there are a few of these around. Two-Fish, for example, is a Firestore cipher. Firestore ciphers see use in padding schemes, like the padding scheme used for digital signatures on certificates. Um, Firestore ciphers are used for uh, key schedules. They're used for in, all over cryptography. Um, and they're very, very cool. Right? So that's what I wanted to talk about today. All right, so a Firestore cipher is not actually a, a cipher in and of itself. It's essentially a kind of framework for building encryption algorithms. It's a structure, and then you put in some encryption rounds and a key and things like this, and then it turns it into a cipher for you. Right? And it has some really neat properties. So I'm gonna draw it out and then we'll talk about the interesting properties that it has. So you start with a block and we're gonna split that block in two. And then we're gonna take, this is the right hand side and this is the left hand side. We're gonna take the right hand side down. We're going to put it through some kind of function, right? which is gonna be some kind of pseudo random function like a hash or an encryption round or something like this. We're gonna take it out here. We're gonna XOR it with the left and then we're gonna bring the left down and we're gonna bring the right down here. And this is your next block. So when you say left, you mean the left hand side of that block on the right hand side. Do they have to be exactly half and half? Ah, very good question. So in this case, yes, but in general, no, you have unbalanced Faisal ciphers where the left and the right are uh, different sizes. For, for this demonstration, they're gonna be the same size. As, 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 as near as I can draw it, I'm not very good at drawing. Um, so the next round is exactly the same. We take whatever this new right is, we bring it round, we go through F, we XOR it with the left, and we come down here like this, and so on. Right? And you can repeat this process as many times as you like for however many rounds. And then at the very end, after the last round, you flip the output like this. Now, this is a structure for encryption in the sense that you can put in any F here and you sort of build yourself a cipher. Now this F obviously needs to be somewhat reasonable, um, but what's so incredibly clever about this encryption algorithm is how you decrypt it. To decrypt using the same file stuff, you encrypt by putting your block in here, it goes through here, it goes through here, it goes through here, and it goes through as many rounds as you want, and you get some output. To decrypt it, you pick that up and you put it in the top and you run it again. And even if this F is a one-way hash function that can't be reversed, that still decrypts it. What? <laughs> Come on, I mean, I know. This is, this is why I love Fast Ciphers. So we're just gonna do it. We're gonna start with LNR and we're gonna work through and we'll see that it does actually reverse itself, right? Which is just amazing. I mean, maybe you've seen a Fast Cipher before, maybe you know this happens, right? But I think when the first time I learned about this, I thought that is, that is awesome. So let's do this. This is the left, this is the right. Now, for the sake of argument, they're the same size in this one. The right's gonna come down here and it's gonna go through this function. So we're gonna put in a key into this F and it's a lot more secure to make these a sub key. So lots of different keys for each round. So this is gonna be key one. This is going to be key two, like this. This F is a round function that combines whatever comes in with the key and mixes it up and sends it out here. This R comes through this F, yeah? And it's XORed with this L. And this comes down to here. So this element is L, XOR, F with R and K1. So I mean, that's gonna look like gibberish as far as I'm concerned. This side is fairly straightforward. The R just comes straight down and turns into an R, like that. So let's do the next round. This is gonna come down here and go through here, and then it's gonna be XORed with this R. So this output here is R XOR F of this, which is L, I'm gonna run out of space, L XOR F of R K1 of K2, like that. Does that is that right? I think it's right. Maybe it's a good thing that we didn't do three rounds or four rounds of this, because this could take me quite a while by hand. This one is going to get copied down. So this is going to be L, X, or F of R and K1. Now, both of these will look like gibberish. We're going to switch them around here. I won't draw them in quite yet, right? But this one comes down here, and this one comes down here. Feel free to animate it, Sean. Thanks for that. All right. <laughs> so now we're going to see how we can decrypt this back to L and R 
And all we have to do is take this, put it in the top, and we have to swap our subkeys around because, of course, the, the rounds are happening in a different order. So I'm going to draw this exact same structure again on the next piece of paper so that we have something new to work on. Otherwise, I'm going to get very confused. So this could be a competition. How fast can you draw a Faisal cipher from memory? Um, so go that. I mean, they're not nearly wide enough for me to fit my stuff in. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go again. Uh, I think that's right, you know. So the keys need to be in a different order. So this is going to be K2 coming in here, and this is going to be K1 coming in here. Reversing these keys, you know, algorithmically not too much of a problem. That will be a list of data or something like that. Very straightforward. All right, so let's put, let's copy our data, our cipher text in. We're sort of going to do, we're going to do that and plug them in like this. Yeah. See what I'm doing? Yeah. So I'm going to draw them in. Um, so bear with me. This one is going to be over here. R XOR F of L XOR F R K1 K2. Yeah. And we'll just pretend that green line's a little bit further along, right? And this one is just L XOR F of R K1. And then we're going to see what happens. Can you remember what it was that's really interesting about XOR if you do it again it's, a second time? It's the reversible thing, right? Isn't it's it? It's the reversible thing, yeah. right? That's the key to this whole thing. Yeah. Um, when you XOR something with the same thing again, it undoes it. Right? So what happens here is L f of r k1 is going to come through here and turn into f of l f of r k1 k2 which is this bit so that's going to come in xor with this and we're just going to get r out again here this gets copied down here so l xor f of r k1 so let's go again r comes in here it becomes f of r k1 xor with this this becomes l R gets passed down here, L goes to here, R goes to here. And this will work for any number of rounds and for any round function, right? which is super cool. And it's going to be a combination of all of these. So this one times this one, plus this one times this one, plus this one times this one, plus this one times this one, and then we repeat this process for each of the values. So we're taking bits and bytes from all of these in this column, jumbling them up, moving them around, shifting them. And there is a reverse inverse matrix.